Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Matt Stefanelli. I'm a French plastic surgeon with a double practice uh, in Dubai and in Paris. And it's a big pleasure to be uh, with you today to invite you to this uh, bioscience symposium that will focus on the 360 beautification. You know that um, bioscience is an expert and a leader and a pioneer in body filler, but it will not be only about uh, body, it will be also about face. So it will be 360. We will address, uh, of course, um, different uh, body areas like buttocks, hips, also calves and uh, depression. And then we will move up to the, to the face with a special focus on eyes peri, uh, periocular regeneration. We will have a bunch of lectures and live demo and I'd like to present you the bioscience team because we are uh, definitely a team with a big, big uh, input of uh, Italian, Piero Krabai, my uh, close friend also from, from Dubai, plastic surgeon from uh, Milano and Dubai. We have also uh, Massimiliano Barambilla, he's not here, he's um, in charge of a live demo. Uh, you will see uh, him a little bit later. We have also from R Roma, Dr. Fabio Fantosi, plastic surgeon. And then we have also uh, non-Italian doctors. We have uh, Dr. Duku Botoaka, Romanian doctor practicing in London, UK. And we have Dr. Ana Anathasios Christopoulos, plastic surgeon from Athens. Finally, the big boss of uh, science, bioscience, uh, Mr. Dr. Hayad Amsharif will also uh, give a talk. So we have uh, a team of six uh, doctors and I will be the, the host, the moderator. Um, you have to know that uh, this uh, bioscience um, company is uh, not new. They are uh, expert in body filler since 2001, so it's more than 20 years of um, experience. And they are very committed in safety. Um, I was a few days ago in uh, Vienna for the ISAPS Congress, the, you know, the World Congress of Plastic Surgeons, and I had the pleasure to present my experience in butt and hip fillers. And believe me, if my talk was accepted in a high-zap with a non-commercial uh, society, it means a lot. And you have to know that um, Bioscience is a global uh, partner of high-zap since 2019. Um, I made myself some, uh, some video with uh, following high-zap's recommendation. Um, so um, you, can, you can definitely trust this uh, company and they have also the C mark. Uh, and uh, the ISO certification, et cetera, et cetera. So with this uh, introduction, I think this is now the, the time to start. And uh, the very first uh, speaker is actually uh, Dr. Duku Boataka. He's a Romanian breast surgeon. It means general surgeon with a subspecialty in breast uh, surgery. And he has a tremendous experience in um, buttock augmentation, and he will share with us uh, his experience in particular with uh, Hyacorp for the butt and also the filler, I think, right? Yeah. I'm going, first of all, sorry, to play a video. Uh, you had a video? I didn't see. Uh. It was, no, okay, so just before, uh, my dear, I'm going to play a video because it's important to, uh, first of all, to see that, and after, you can stay here if you want. Yeah. The best artists, innovators, and creators know you can't rush quality. It takes time. Quality doesn't come overnight, from a fluke, or from a split-second encounter. It takes trial, effort, craft, and precision. It never comes from your first question, your first answer, thought, or idea. It takes longer, days, months, even years. Quality is never finished from the first stroke. You have to look, touch, feel, mold, and reshape to find that inspiration to reach the extraordinary. And from over 20 years of inspiration, we have been perfecting every breakthrough putting our knowledge, skills, and expertise into our work to become the best in the aesthetic industry. With our German engineering pedigree, our years of experience in hyaluronic acid products and patented technologies, we will continue to invest our time to push the quality of our products. 
Because quality of craft means impeccable beauty. Bioscience, the beauty of quality. Okay, so after this introduction, I wish you all a very good symposium. This symposium will be very interactive. We, we are uh, going to have some Q&A, especially after the live demo of Dr. Bambia. Uh, so keep your question for this moment and use microphone, please. We are going now to give the speech to, to Dr. Uh, du, Duku, non-surgical buttock augmentation. Yes, please. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Mr. Stefanelli, for the introduction. I am so lucky. My first presentation at AMWC, and I'm the first one. So that feels great. So gluteal augmentation. Men love it, women love it. Why? We all know why. A uh, trend that has been expanding, and it has been expanding at an algorithmical rate. If you look at the numbers from 2015 to 2019, we have a more than 65% increase in the number of patients getting buttock augmentation and more than 70% in the number of patients getting buttock lift. Uh, there are different ways to do it. You can do implants, you can do fat grafting, lipofilling, and you can also use dermofillers. And the dermofillers are different. Some of them are permanent, some of them are semi-permanent. I think most of us have had or at least heard about permanent dermal fillers, and they do tend to give pretty big complications over the year. So me, personally, in my practice, I try to stay away from them. Why choose hyaluronic acid for Botox augmentation? Several reasons. First reason, and I think it's the most important one, as Dr. Stefanelli pointed before, it's the safety. Hyaluronic acid is biodegradable, is not a permanent filler, is reversible, so any complication you may get after the procedure can be reversed. You get fast results. The cost is more affordable than other safe uh, fillers like PLLA or hydroxyapatite, and from my experience in my practice, the volume is better. What I tend to use is Genefil Conjure, and now that uh, Bioscience have launched on the market Genefil Conjure Plus, that's what I use now. Uh, the syringe is already pre-prepared. It's very easy to use, sterilized. It has a combination of non-crosslink hyaluronic acid and crosslink hyaluronic acid. And the particle size is higher than facial fillers, and the most important part, it has a very high G prime, 652. What do I use it for, and what we should all use it for? It's Botox contouring, correction of concave deformities, cough correction. I do get a lot of male patients in my practice getting cough correction, and also hands rejuvenation. And I, what I can tell you is I've been trying to use other products that I'm not gonna name for hands correction, and the durability of Genafil is much better. Disclosure, I love the product. I've recently been introduced with the company so I have no commercial interest so far. Hopefully I'll get some. <laughs> now, one very important thing about bioscience products is the residual amount of free BDD. I need to mention that it's a biphasic hyaluronic acid product. Uh, that gives it lo a longer lasting effect than the monophasic ones and better elasticity. And as you can see in the diagram, the free BDD, which is the, basically the toxic form, the toxic residue from the product, is less than 0.001 milligram per milliliter, which is twice less than what the FDA requires. Now, how do you use it? So, you can implant it subcutaneous or supraperiostal. Always stay away from implanting it very superficial. Uh, when you do that, you can get the Tyndall effect, and also you can get uh, more granulomas in my experience. Uh, what it does, it supplements the intracellular matrix and the intradermal tissue, and also mechanically, it stimu stimulates neocollagenesis. So, when I was training as a surgeon, one of uh, the doctors I worked with, uh, Mr. Manish Sina, 
taught me something very important. Always trust your markings. Whether you do breast surgery, lipo, or butt augmentation, trust your markings. Because when the patient sits in prone or supine position, you, use, you lose your anatomical mar uh, landmarks. So I think the most important part of the procedure is marking the patient well. Obviously, use local anesthetic. Uh, I tend to use prophylactic antibiotic like coamoxiclive, or if the patient is allergic to that, I try to use uh, uh, ciprofloxacin. And using the syringe, again, it's very easy. It's pre-prepared. You just remove it, open it, put it in the cannula. It's lure lock, and just start injecting. Uh, choosing patients is very important. Now, patients that have uh, allergy to hyaluronic acid are obviously a no-go. Autoimmune diseases and infectious uh, or inflammatory processes in the treat treatment area obviously are a no-go as well. Uh, if they have a tendency to hypertrophic or keloid scarring, from my point of view, as long as you inform the patient, considering that the incision site is very more small and they're happy to take the risk to have a small keloid, you should be able to go ahead. Now, the treatment protocol. You start by looking at the patient and the type of pump they have. There are, we usually encounter a-shaped Botox, V-shaped Botox, which I think are the hardest to treat, uh, square Botox, and round Botox. Obviously, there are a lot more different types, but this is a general evaluation. So the anatomy of the Botox is given by a combination of the bone structure, the gluteus maximum muscle, and the amount of subcutaneous fat each patient has. So I'm going to show now Two type, three types of patients I get to treat. I have a lot of transgender patients uh, that are afraid of the side effects from bum implants. Now, I do have to admit that for this type of patients, probably the buttock implant is the best choice. But you, as you can see, you can get really good results. Not in one session, I have to specify. Two, three sessions, you can get really good results with this type of patients as well, as you can see in the first picture. Second picture is a famous patient of mine. She had bum implants and she doesn't have fat. So but what she wanted is a bigger bum. The surgeon was very safe and told her he can't replace and put bigger bum implants because she had complications. So what I did was use genital contour to get her from there to the next result. And I did actually six sessions so far on her. At the end, I will show you the end result. Now, the last picture. Uh, is the V-shaped buttock, which I feel is very hard to treat, and it's important to let to inform the patients when it comes to the V-shaped buttock that the shape of the bum is not only given by the bum itself, it's also given by her waist. So it should always be a combination of treatment. In her case, I did inject a bit of uh, genophil, but my suggestion to her first was to try and get a uh, lipo filling. Now, I don't know how it works in the rest of the world, but in the UK, it's very important for insurance purposes to follow the instructions of the producer. So always use an ATG cannula. Don't go in the muscle, and that's a no-go for any type of surgery, and don't stay too superficial. Now, this is a video of how I do the procedure. I tend to try and get one point of uh, incision and reach the whole buttock. Uh, it's my opinion that this way you get less of a risk of post-procedure infection. Again, trust your markings. Those are not the breast markings, but I did quite a lot of Botox enhancements, so I don't need to draw them as the beginning, but for beginning practitioners, I do recommend to do proper markings. And this is another video. I love the fanning technique for doing uh, the hip dips. And again, one entry point. After I do the hip dips, I try to give a little bit of, the, of uh, projection using the same entry point. Obviously, there's no right or wrong. Every surgeon has his own preference when it comes to the injection te technique.
Now, I tend to do touch-ups. I don't do big quantities at the first injection. Several reasons. First and most important is the safety profile. Second reason is you can basically correct any type of asymmetry that you get after the first injection and any type of migration. And you can also inject higher volume safely. And what I've noticed in my patients, it, it gives a longer lasting results. And I have the before photo, and here I have a video of what you can get after two sessions. I have to specify, this is my favorite type of bone. Another few before and after, as I was telling you, this patient had six sessions of Genefil Contour and then Genefil Contour Pros. Another transgender patient, four, four sessions before, after the second session, and after the fourth session. Another patient of mine, still four sessions, only Genefil, no other product injected. Now, Pre-procedure instructions, always get the medical information of the patient. Find out exactly what their medical history is and ask them to avoid any anticoagulant drugs, avoid any topical products for at least two days before the procedure and one day prior to the procedure, make sure they don't go into a club. Post-procedure instructions. Uh, so, avoid exposure to heat to tell my patients not to massage it. I do a follow-up one week after the procedure, and if I need to massage anything, I will massage it myself. I ask them to sleep on a prone position for seven days and uh, avoid uh, any type of gym for seven days. But actually, downtime-wise, I don't think there should be any. The patients can resume their normal activity two hours after the procedure. And aftercare, Obviously, painkillers, if needed, for 48 hours, and antibiotics. I tend to give my patients antibiotics, but again, it's a choice of the doctor. Now, the adverse effects, as Mr. Stefalini was presenting earlier, you have immediate adverse reactions, which are fairly easy, and they self-resolve usually within one, two weeks. You get redness, swelling, hematomas. Now, the Tyndall effect, I think if you inject it right, in the right depth, you shouldn't get. Now, delayed side effects are very rare. I've done, last year I have done around 300 uh, patients with uh, Genefil, and only one patient had necrosis on one side, but I have to mention she did fall down the stairs immediately after she left my clinic. Uh, so if you inject in small quantities, this product can be very safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Botoaka. So just to make a little bit more clear, he presents his experience with Genefil. Um, I forgot to mention that actually there are not one but different products uh, from Bioscience. Actually, they start with uh, the biphasic line of dermal filler. First of all, Hyacorp, and then Genefil, in particular Genefil Contour used by Dr. Botoaka. So uh, don't, don't get confused, Hyacorp, Genefil, they are both biphasic uh, body filler, and they are both from Bioscience. And then they followed uh, with the monophasic line, Hyaprof, that will be discussed uh, later on. Uh, now I like to uh, call on stage the CEO of Bioscience, Dr. Eyad. Dr. Eyad, I think you are not a doctor, but you are in medicine, but you are a doctor in chemistry, in pharmacy. So um, this is a pleasure to have you uh, here. I think you are originally Syrian, but you live in, uh, in Dubai, right? Yes. Bravo. Okay, so I'm going to launch your, um, uh, your talk uh, here. And you will uh, have a special focus on the, this uh, new product, Hyacorp Phil, right? Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Max, for the, uh, for the introduction. Um, I'm so happy, uh, good afternoon everybody first. I'm so, so happy to be here between you uh, tonight uh, for the official launching of Hyacorp Feel. 
Uh, aligning with our strategy since 2001 and our vision for bioscience, we were concentrating of having a complete line for facial and for body dermal fillers. Uh, within 15 years of uh, uh, um, safety history with, with Hyacorp, we could, we could reach um, the, our targets by being the pioneer in the market worldwide in terms of body fillers. Uh, since two years, since the time of the pandemics, we start concentrating on improving our facial line. And in here, our R&D department, they started uh, working on a new interesting formulas. And uh, therefore, we are here to launch our new facial product called Hyacorp Feel. Hyacorp Feel is a product dedicated for the mid to deep derms area uh, with many interesting um, uh, applications and indications. Uh, I don't want to elaborate a lot about the product uh, because we have the experts here who will not only talk about the product, but they, but they will demonstrate lively uh, life injections about Hyacorp Feel. Um, at the end, uh, I wish you all uh, uh, to enjoy our symposium. And don't forget to be tonight in our uh, uh, dinner uh, invitation for the official launching for Hyacorp Feel. And uh, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eyad. And now it should be the time to connect with uh, Dr. Massimiliano Brambia, famous plastic surgeon from Milano, Italy, for a live demo. So I don't know if uh, we are in... Uh, in contact with the live demo room. Massimiliano, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah, bravo. Yes, but we don't see you, so maybe technician could fix that. Just a moment, Massimiliano. So let me just introduce uh, Massimiliano. Massimiliano, like Piero, is a big friend of mine, very close, and a uh, um, very brilliant plastic surgeon from, uh, from Milano, very creative. Ah, yes, now we see you. And uh, he has a tremendous experience in a genital surgery, buttock surgery, body contouring surgery, and he's going to do, perform now a live demo of... Uh, too butt. kind, too kind, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I really uh, think it. Uh, okay. He's going to perform a non-surgical augmentation with, um, with I think, Hyacorp, right? Yes. MLF2? No, we will go with Genefield. Ah, Genefield, Genefield Contour. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Matt, may, may I illustrate the case so that we understand what we are doing? Can yes. you see the image? Yes, but could you tilt a little bit the screen of your computer because we have a reflection? Yes, now it's perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. So, uh, we have this lovely patient. She, she is 25 and she had, she, she had little weight loss and it, some loss of tissue here and relaxation inferiorly. And we see that she, she is concave here and we want to make modifications. So you see in the three quarter again, that the problem of her uh, gluteal area is not just the projection, but is the trochanteric area. P projection as well, but is mainly the trochanteric area. Uh, look here in the simulation, what happened if I increase the volume of a trochanteric. So uh, I, I will play with volume of a trochanteric area and with enhancing of the volume um, of, a of a projection. So my, my idea is to use Genefield Contour uh, with some blobs um, around 30 cc's and then fan technique, more superficial in order to improve the laxity, and then by the end, some bolus, a small, small bolus for the projection. So let's start. So do you have any question? Because in the meantime, maybe uh, Can you remove while uh, Massimiliano is preparing the patient, any question? And if you, you have one, take a microphone, please. We have our crew here. Okay. Any question? Maybe. No? Okay. Maybe. okay. Let's see. Excuse me. So maybe uh, we can ask the CEO, Dr. Uh, Eyad. You have a higher corp. You have Genefil. We understand very, uh, very uh, easily that it's a 
very good and interesting uh, global strategy. But could you tell us a little bit more on how you end up with this strategy of having more or less two similar products with different branding? Uh, actually, when we started in bioscience in 2001, hello. Okay. I'm saying uh, it's clear, yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So I'm just saying that when we started in bioscience in 2001, we started in many medical uh, fields. We didn't start in aesthetic directly. We started with orthopedic, right with the right. gynecology, with the, um, um, uh, ophthalmology, with the, uh, urology, and many other medical fields. Then at the end, uh, but all of them were concentrated on uh, hyaluronic acid. So, but at the end, we use all our expertise in the other medical fields to produce our aesthetic field. We, come, we came up for, uh, firstly with the uh, our first product, our pioneer product, Hyacorp, uh, big particle size with a long duration, uh, and it, it comes in two, uh, two, uh, uh, two sizes. Uh, both of them are, uh, are differs only in the particle size, one soft and one, uh, one with bigger particle size of hyaluronic acid for buttock augmentation. So then we came MLF1 MLF1 soft. and MLF2, exactly. Uh, MLF1 with the smaller particle size of hyaluronic acid. We can use it for hands, for uh, calves, uh, concave uh, deformities, uh, any uh, small area in the body, augmentation of course. Then we came up with MLF2, uh, which is dedicated for, for the buttock augmentation. Um, after that, in 2014, uh, we came up with a plan. Our R&D department came up with a plan to, uh, uh, to launch a new product called Genifil. Uh, Genifil was a new product in everything. Uh, uh, Genifil was, was a softer product than Hyacorp, was a new version of Hyacorp, but, but was targeted for different, uh, different type of clients. Here, we're, we're targeting more uh, the people with the small areas that needs more improvement, uh, softer gel that can be injected easily uh, um, uh, than, I can say than Hyacorp, of course. Uh, the duration, it will differ according to the patient itself. So now the doctor, he has two, two options. He has Hyacorp and he has Genifil. Some doctors, they prefer to use Hyacorp. Uh, they, they sacrifice a little bit the, uh, the hardness toward getting a, a longer duration. Some other doctors, they prefer to use Genifil where they have the, uh, um, they sacrifice a little bit the duration in order to get much softer uh, um, uh, look or touch as well. So that was the two strategy behind having Genifil and yes. Hyacorp. Thank you very much. Now, I think Maximiliano, you are ready? Yeah, ready. May so I start? I, I think the first, the first uh, very important okay. point is how is the setup of your procedure so, in terms of asepsia, position of the okay. patient, etc. Asepsia, position, then I hate pain, so those are my entry points, one and two. We don't see very well. Is it possible to have a camera on, on the top? It's a little bit tangential. Can you move the camera over the top? Or any other camera higher? Because we don't see very well, to be honest. Uh, no, it seems impossible. Okay, that's fine. Hold on. Anyway, there are two entry points. Hold on. We are doing our best. Yes. The cameraman is doing the best. <laughs> Where are you, by the way, Massimiliano? You are in Forum Grimaldi or in another clinic? Uh, I cannot tell you. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, in Forum Grimaldi, of course. Oh, okay. We are very close. Oh, okay. 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 Can you see me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, go okay. ahead. Go ahead, please. Thank so you. there is an entry point. This is the entry point. So I hate pain, so this is light, little Lido. Uh, plus a little bit of adrenaline. One, second entry point. Needle is 30 gauge needle. Then, uh, when I inject important quantities of hyaluronic acid, antibiotic. Antibiotic, I think, is crucial to be, be safe. So where I injected uh, my uh, anesthetic, I give a shot of uh, antibiotic, cephalosporin, Generally, we do at least 20 minutes before, but we didn't have time. I'm sorry, but we have to do it. And so, so you are, the cephalosporin is in the syringe that you yes. just inject? Interesting, okay. Then I hate pain, as I told you. It's not a painful treatment, but few drops of painkiller, it helps. Just few, I mean, uh, just a little bit of keterolic, just a little bit, little bit. Then... Uh, this is the area I will treat. As I told you, we will improve the projection, 
of the gluteal area here of the upper gluteus, the projection of the trochanteric area, and this is my cannula. So my cannula will go here, 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 and here. In this place, I will put, I will set some small bolus, and I will go with a fan technique in the other direction. Massimiliano, so, could you tell us about the length and the diameter of the cannula? Yeah, it's an 18 gauge uh, cannula of 10 centimeters. Okay. Then you can play with the tissues, but it means yeah. that the 10 centimeter it can become 12. even 15 if you play with the tissues. So this is the entry point. And it's very interesting to see that he marks clearly the definition, the limit between the back and the butt, and he's entering in the back to enter the butt, because he know he is sure that he will not uh, need... Then you're in, and I go where I want to go. Then here there are some uh, small tricks that each one has. For example, this is hyper-diluted anesthetic, hyper-diluted, and I inject a small quantity because, again, I don't like them to feel pain. So generally, even 10 or 20 cc's per side are fair enough to make the experience a good experience instead of a bad one. Because remember that this is a reabsorbable material, so patients uh, they would like to come back to your office to, re to do again the, the procedure. And if they feel pain the first time, you will lose the patient. And this is fair enough for me. So it means 15 cc's. And I think it's very important to, uh, to inject uh, also not just the entry point, but also the area. Because in the buttock, you have some septae between skin and muscle. And when you go through, it could be painful. So I think uh, it's very important what my And you did. see, pinch, I pinch. And I feel the tissue, uh, the soft tissue here. I feel the gluteus. And y y you see how it moves. I want to be. Uh, in the deep side of the soft tissue of the, of the fat. I don't want to enter inside the muscle. And I start with genophil. Small blobs. Why blobs? Because when you inject uh, some small balls of hyaluronic acid, uh, the reabsorption rate is lower. So here I'm deep injecting small bolus. Of course, deep, but not, not too much. <laughs> in the deep fat? Yeah, in the deep fat. And why bolus and not uh, linear threads? Because when you have a ball, the reabsorption is less because it's less attacked by, uh, uh, by um, um, enzymes and proteins. So to, to get more projection, right? Yeah, and to get more, where you want to get more projection. So this is 10. Sarah, everything is fine? Yeah. Tubia? Yeah. How is the extrusion force with Genefil? Uh, Massimilia is quite easy, it's or maybe like I'm a, a, is uh, like uh, IACorp one. IACorp one, okay. Yeah, very similar. Similar, okay. Is it possible to zoom out a little bit with the, because we like to see how you hold your syringe? Because sometimes it could be a little bit more difficult. Sometimes with MLF two, we have a, with a high corp. It's a little bit difficult for our female colleagues. They might need two hands. So can you zoom out a little bit or ask the guy to show how you put your fingers on the syringe? Then I will go on the trochanteric area with my bolus. Perfect, thank you. So you consider only entry point to reach both upper butt and uh, hips? Yeah. OK, bravo. Interesting.
And you see, he's not removing the cannula. It's like uh, when, you know, uh, the digestive colleagues, they do celioscopy, they have the port, and they don't remove the port, and then you charge, you load the syringe on the cannula. This is very important to, to avoid to remove out, in and out the, the cannula. So this is my um, second one. And then I will go with a fan, with a fan technique. A little bit more superficial? Yes, of course. So it's a double layer technique. Yes. I'm happy because we are having the same technique. And I think it's important to, to, uh, to, uh, to have this double layer. You start deep fat, and then you go to yeah. the superficial fat. You see, here we need just superficial fat to be done. So I start from lateral. First 20. Then you see that I need to give more, little more volume here. You see? Yeah. You have also to realize that as we put the patient on the table, it all changes. the markings are coming up. Yeah, it changes everything. She, she yeah. has little laxity or a major laxity, but we will fix it. So usually at the end, when we have a touch-up, it's always, at least in my hands, in the yeah. lower part. Now there is the last one. And then we will do something that probably you do often, that is watching the patient in the standing position. Here we are quite superficial. It means that I have almost one centimeter of fat between the skin and the cannula. So you know, in, in liposuction, Massimiliano, we divide a little bit uh, artificially, deep fat, superficial fat, and yeah. very superficial fats. Yeah. So my question for you, would you consider also to inject just subdermal? Because at the end, you know, sometimes you have only one syringe, you have a little uh, imperfection, and for the final touch-up, you need to be as close as possible to the skin. But we all know also that it's more immunogenic. So what do you think about the very superficial injection? I'm aware of using um, big quantities and hyaluronic acid with high viscosity and uh, high density in the superficial fat, uh, especially for um, not to have irregularities. So I always like to have at least one centimeter and a half of fat okay. to cover my product. Okay. But I agree with what you said. Huh? I totally agree. Because we have to uh, remember that uh, the deeper you go, the more products you need to have yeah, the, of course. The, the effect, the result. Of course. So we need also to manage a little bit the, the, the volume, numbers of syringe, budget of, of the course. patient. But so. with a treatment such as that, in mean, double layer uh, is definitely long lasting. So yes. it's a matter of selection of patients. There are some patients I, I, that are suitable even for their pocket money for the treatment. And there are others that are, um, that are not. OK, close your legs like this. OK. OK, I'm, I finished my correction on this side. I will, you, you can continue with your lectures. And then I will take some pictures after the, the procedure. We, we and so that we can make a comparison out, out of before and, and after the treatment. Uh, Massimiliano, uh, you mentioned that you might do the final touch-up in a standing up position. Yes. We will uh, be happy to see that. Yeah, I will take some pictures. OK, thank you very much. So uh, before to go to the next session about face, 
we are uh, having some Q&A. So any question in the audience for, uh, for Massimiliano, for Dr. Butaoka about butt and hip filler? Yes, please. One question. Just take the microphone. Hello. Uh, why always he use uh, antibiotics before we start the, um, uh, the, the normal body filler? It's uh, usually used the yeah. antibiotics. Okay. Uh, Massimiliano, are you still here? No, I didn't hear the question. I'm going to repeat. So the question is, are you always using uh, this injection of antibiotic in your entry point? Always. And why compared to, for example, oral antibiotics? Um, the, the, the second question is why? Uh, yeah, why, why you, uh, you, you do that instead of, for example, uh, some oral antibiotics for a few ah, days? Because literature is extra clear okay. that uh, endovenous or intramuscular is definitely more effect effectively effective than uh, oral. Okay. Um, and you have to do it in the right time. You have to start before. We, we start a little later, but generally is at least 20 minutes before surgery. Uh, with this, you avoid the need of giving antibiotic uh, at home. Okay, so uh, it means your injection safety. was intramuscular? Yeah, it's safe. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, not subcutaneous, so we, of we course. use this point. No, I, I, I okay, go okay. Where, I, where my entry point is because I don't like them to feel the needle. Yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, I'm going just to answer also. I, I think I'm going to change now. This is uh, the good point. Uh, you, we learn always. Uh, I give antibiotics, oral antibiotics for uh, five days, because even if I am in sterile condition, you know, we all know that any foreign body implants, fillers can give a biofilm and uh, with the experience from the past of this inflammation, sometimes years, months after the, 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 the procedure. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping the antibiotics uh, oral, but maybe I'm going to change like uh, Massimiliano is doing. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, he's, uh, you know, very uh, sterile. Of course, he's not doing it in the operative theater, but um, this is not, uh, you know, face filler. He has sterile gloves. He's uh, having a full uh, asepsia, sterile drapes, etc., and uh, antibiotic intramuscular. This is the, the right way to do it. Good. Any other question? No. Uh, for uh, Dr. Botaoka. No. I, uh, you show very interesting uh, uh, result. Congratulations. So I'd like to ask you, you are a surgeon, so you do fat grafting, you do buttock implants, right? Uh, I don't do one. You don't do, but you show some uh, uh, so patients with butt implants. So, so microphone, microphone. Sorry. So let me just finish my question. Yep. So how you would position the use of higher corp or genefil in the armamentarium of a, a plastic surgeon having Everything both right. uh, implant, more fat, and the higher cut. Okay. So I think it's more complementary than a primary procedure. It can be a primary procedure in people who are afraid of surgery. Uh, butt implants, they have a lot of down, downtime, and there is uh, obviously pain involved as well. Uh, and the complication rate over the years uh, can scare off some of the patients. You don't get the same results, so you have to explain to the patient. If you want a Kim Kardashian look and your bum is like this, not even bum implants will go do it, but fillers for sure won't. Uh, but if you get a patient like my patient that I showed before with bum implants and she wants bigger bum, uh, she has no fat then that's where the fillers come in. Or sometimes, if you have a bit of movement from the, uh, for the, uh, from the implant and you want to cover that, you can use filler to cover it. Okay, thank you. So uh, I think we are going now to, uh, to move on and to go to the next uh, part of the symposium, which will be uh, the face, the use of uh, uh, bioscience portfolio for the face. And it's my big pleasure to introduce uh, Piero Krabai. Piero Krabai is, uh, first of all, my big friend. We are both in Dubai. And um, he's also practicing in Milano. He's a very experienced plastic surgeon. I don't know how many years. Maybe you will tell it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's in the board of uh, Hayakorp Bioscience since the beginning. 
so he has a tremendous experience to share uh, with you, but mainly with body. Today you are going to speak about, uh, about the face, uh, uh, Piero, and especially with this COVID time, a special focus on the periocular region, eyes are the new lips, right? Right, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Can we switch to the lecture? Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your introduction. You're very kind always. And today we are talking about uh, the eyes. Uh, why are the new lips? Because recently they acquired a lot of importance, especially after the pandemic. Um, and I will explain why. Uh, so around the fillers, it is still a lot of interest, especially in a facial filler. You see here around how many how many brands are in, in this conference and Congress is very huge, the number. And this is why the non-invasive procedure are getting more and more interesting even for doctors uh, that starting the practice in, um, in aesthetic and even for other doctors that are still skilled. And uh, as I told you, actually the, the experience of the last two years uh, expose the face uh, to be more shown. Uh, even from ourselves, when we picture ourselves in, in a video, we have a conference, we shows uh, how much ugly sometimes is our face, the wrinkles and everything that uh, can be shown. And with the mask, the only possibility that we have to at attract or to give our expression, even when we go outside to, to shopping or to do even uh, in the market, uh, is just with the eyes. So this is why eyes actually had a, a, a booming in the request, uh, in the request of uh, the treatment, and especially in, in uh, this in this the last months. And the procedure for periorbital rejuvenation are uh, uh, academically are surgical and not surgical. Uh, we are oh, today we are I'm talking about not surgical, of course, and uh, not surgical. The one that you can use are neurotoxin when you have to reduce wrinkles, when you have to reduce, uh, especially wrinkles and crow fits. But not surgical ones. Uh, the most performed are uh, the fillers, fillers that can reduce the tear drops, deformity, the black, dark circle, and uh, fillers. Uh, uh, the most. Uh, 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 the most classical, uh, most safe, is the hyaluronic acid uh, um, infiltration uh, in the periorbital area. And to have a perfect, uh, to get a perfect treatment of hyaluronic acid and periorbital rejuvenation, of course, uh, you should have a, a very good technique and you should have in your hand a good product. Uh, why? Because periorbital uh, anatomy is, uh, is a very peculiar you have a very difficult uh, to treat in terms of increasing the product and highly skin is the thinnest of the body as everybody knows. Uh, moreover, there are dynamic structures that are free uh, sub, uh, of subcutaneous fat and, and at the time you inject, it's possible to see uh, irregularities that can appear more than in another part of the, of the face of the body. And, it's important to know that if you inject any part of the, this, uh, this anatomy that is very complex, every structure can have a different, a different uh, uh, reaction. If you inject uh, uh, by, by chance or in the fat or in the muscle, uh, you have a, a different reaction. It's not always the same. And this is why it's very, it's very important to know well anatomy, as my friend uh, Matt knows, and he does uh, very interesting courses of anatomy always. Uh, very important to follow. And in specifically, it's very important to know the anatomy of uh, the anatomy of the vessel, the ventral vessel that are around the the, uh, the eyes. So you have to know perfectly every every kind of risk that you can have injecting, especially that you have to know that there can be uh, the risk of the time you are injecting a lot inside, especially in the, uh, uh, the place of angular artery, dorsal nasal artery, that are in connection, that put in connection the uh, internal external carotid, 
uh, you could uh, create uh, a paradoxical proximal emboli. This is very rare since there is not, it's not very frequent, fortunately, but it can happen at the times you can use uh, uh, not a good product that can give a lot of, uh, a lot of expansion in the tissue, can compress the arteries, and at the same time can uh, uh, occlude the ophthalmic arteries. More frequent, uh, you can see a, a lot of uh, uh, complication, let's say, or adverse cases that coming after injecting specifically the area uh, when you occlude the, um, the lymphatic vessel. Uh, the lymphatic vessel is a big plexus around uh, in, the, in the eyelids and this is why it's very important to have a good product, as I told you at the beginning, because if you have a, a product that, that is, uh, is very thick and it, it starts occluding or your technique is not good, you can even have a, a complication, a big swelling. And everybody that injected this area, I think, uh, had uh, this experience in uh, one time in her, his life. Um, about the high uh, accord feel, uh, this is a product that was talking before uh, Dr. Eyad. Uh, it's a new product for the superficial and mid uh, dermis uh, that, um, that is, uh, I think, the, the right product. Why? Because it's uh, a cross-linked uh, hyaluronic acid, 18 milligram per milliliter, with a small particle size. It has a behavior of uh, uh, monophasic one, even if it's biphasic. This can give uh, the opportunity uh, to have a, a long-lasting result and at the same time, you have a, a very easy and, uh, and, and very soft um, quality of product that is easy to inject and you have a nice, a good result. And of course, uh, the higher core feel uh, is uh, one of the uh, ultimate, uh, ultimate product and uh, as a big safety record and the endotoxin is very low. So, and it's very important even to know that the duration is, can be up to 12 months. This is important because uh, the eyelids like uh, the lips, a uh, place that is moving a lot, and uh, the patient should be, uh, should be treated uh, more than one time or two times in a year. And this one can give the possibility to your patient to be treated less. Um, about the technique, about the technique, uh, I can uh, uh, suggest you to use a couple of techniques, one with a cannula, the other with a needle. Uh, for the lower eyelid, you have to use a 30G cannula that you can insert from uh, the lateral part of, uh, of the eye, uh, going down close to, uh, close to the bone, possibly down to the, the, down to the uh, orbicularis muscle uh, uh, with uh, 60 degrees of angle and injecting along the uh, orbital uh, orbital uh, uh, rim, uh, uh, injecting uh, una, an amount of uh, 0.3, 0.8 ml uh, accordingly the needed. And, and after, uh, what I like to do as always, and I think even you are doing a, a massaging the part to spread much better. Uh, personally, I prefer to uh, use a 30G needle to uh, go and make a pointy injection with 0.1, each one running in uh, under the muscle, uh, because muscle in the lower uh, eyelid, and uh, spreading the tissue in this way. Same for the upper eyelid, to, especially for the sunken, uh, sunken eye, especially for the uh, after, after treatment, after the um, very invasive uh, blepharoplasty, it's possible to use a, a 30G needle uh, in uh, marking a point in hemipupillar line and then going inside and outside in the, uh, the uh, upper part of the orbital uh, uh, rim. In this case, you shouldn't be uh, too much deep, you should be uh, preceptal. Uh, you should, it's not such difficult, you have just to pinch and to feel and in your finger, the skin, then you go through this, uh, this uh, 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 this uh, fold. And always it's possible to use a 30G needle and a small point infiltration as spreading and massaging. This is the, uh, the place where you can start, uh, you can do the preorbital infiltration without hitting uh, vessels and without being 
too much invasive. Then this is the location of uh, the infiltration, as I told you. The one is very close to the, to the um, down, sorry, down to the orbicularis muscle, the lower eyelid, and uh, preceptal in the upper uh, eyelid. This is uh, anatomically, this is a submuscular uh, areolar tissue in which you have to inject, and this is the submuscular preceptal. Why you have to inject? Because as I showed you before, if you inject too much superficially, you, the risk is to occlude, to close the lymphatic vessel and to have a big swelling. Then, what is important, the patient selection. You cannot do in very elderly people, so not to a very, very, very loose eyelids, so in not in excessive lacity, not in festoons, in people that has lower eyelids with festoons or with very loose skin. And of course, no pathologies that should be uh, detected before. An indication, uh, the tear throw is the first one, uh, the dark circle can be treated, uh, don't uh, tell the patient that will, uh, you will erase the dark circle with the, 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 um, the filler because it's not true. Sunken eye can have a very good result and moderate pre uh, laxity and previous blepharoplasty can be corrected. I show here some before and after. Of course, the treatment of the, uh, of the eyelids uh, are not like the lips that you see. The lips is thinner than you see uh, pumped. You see here you have mild, uh, mild uh, improvement, even if this mild improvement can be satisfactory for your patient. And you see the before in the, in the, on the left side is before and the right is after. This uh, is treatment of uh, uh, small tear drop deformity, same here. And you see in the right side a small lump appearing. This is after two, three days that can happen. It's not due to, to the occlusion of the vessel, but it's due to the, um, the, uh, um, the filler itself. Same here, uh, a treatment of uh, an hollow in the lower part of the eyelid. And here you can see the correction of the upper part of the island and reduction of elongation of the orbicularis muscle that can be obtained, improving the, uh, the, improving the volume of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, the volume of the lower part of the eyelid. Same here, you see the improvement is uh, pretty visible. And, and here in this young girl, it's possible to uh, correct uh, correct the, the hollow. You have even to think uh, if you want to correct the hollow in a nice way, you have to even to inject the, um, you have in the zygomatic area to give a better result. And what is a complication? Mainly complication are bruises. This is my patient, of course, it's uh, my patient that uh, uh, had uh, a bruises after the treatment and uh, she, is not, she has to be aware about this, uh, this uh, effect. Fortunately, this one is not my patient uh, that came after, after a, a, a massive infiltration of the eyelids. And when you have something like that, it's not, uh, uh, it's not such a difficult, you have to give steroids in case you can treat with hyaluronidasis, even if hyaluronidasis sometimes can give more inflammation of the area. And so you have to be very, uh, very soft, even in treatment with the uh, acid. This one has been treated in, instead with uh, uh, polylactic acid, and she had a big inflammation. I don't suggest you to treat with polylactic acid uh, this kind of, of, um, of uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, uh, area because uh, the, the response uh, always cannot be predictable. In conclusion, I run because I know there is a very huge program, but I, I said very short things, but I think very, very important. It's important the patient selection and the information of the patient, what can happen, and, and the risk and consequences that uh, specifically should be not so, uh, so bad and not so dangerous. And uh, it's important to be trained. The trained injector uh, is a trained injector that knows uh, anatomy and knows perfectly even the product and, uh, and knows uh, how to uh, manage even the complication. And that's it, and thank you so much. <laughs>
Thank grazie, grazie mille Piero, thank you very much. So interesting experience about this new product and this uh, new use. Uh, we are now uh, going to go back to uh, Massimiliano, he just finished the procedure. Uh, Massimiliano, do you hear us? Yeah, yeah, we are a little late, so if, no, no. We, if you can go with another lecture would be better uh, because some, there are small technical problems. That's, that's fine. Um, maybe, is it possible at least to have the, the, the room of Massimiliano? Because I'm just going to take one question, not more, about yeah. the limit of syringe to inject in a single session. Um, Massimiliano, yeah. would you like to answer that? Yes, it's a very good question. I think that depends on the safety, first of all, and the efficacy, secondly. So about... And the money of the patient, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, first of all, safety, and the second is the economical point of view. According to the safety, everything depends on the, the patient, of course. It depends on the pinch test. If you have tissues that, that can hold a bigger amount of, uh, of uronic cases, you can go even up to 80 cc's, 100 cc's per side if you want. Uh, I've seen injecting 200, 300, but I, I think it's definitely, definitely too much. But up to 100, you can, you can do it if you have a good pinch test. And then there is economical part, because it, we know that more we rise up the number of VLs, more the, its prices. So it depends on the economical condition of a patient. And the patient has to understand exactly that she has to repeat the treatment in, um, in sometimes, and that depends on the reabsorption rate. So you, you have to agree with the patient about the treatment. I think it's fantastic, but for selected patients. But in your practice, could you give us an idea, average uh, syringe per session? Ah, it can be from 40 to 80 cc's per side. 40 to 80 yeah, cc, so yeah. 4 to 8 syringes per side, right? Yeah, 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 4 to 8 syringes per side. Okay, what about you, Dr. Leducu? Uh, microphone, microphone. Sorry. Say it's probably the same. Uh, I do get some BBL patients uh, which had one or two BBLs in the past, and there I feel safe to go a bit higher, like 15 syringes per side. 15 syringes per side? Yeah. Okay, Any, anyone in the audience with a good experience of high corp? Doing bigger volume? No? Yes? Uh, ca can you share the, the microphone? Ah, yes, our colleague from Dubai. Yeah, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. So I go uh, up to 12 to 15 per, per side, many of my patients. Uh, I usually uh, have an average of 10 syringes per side or even 8 syringes per side, but to me, when a patient cannot afford to do except like 5 by 5, uh, I do not proceed with the procedure. Uh, if she cannot do sessions, of course, if she can do sessions of five by five, like two or three sessions, then that's it. Because you know, the patients uh, want, uh, you must know what do they want exactly, because they come to you to, to, to have butt filler, they think they're gonna, they're gonna have a, a huge butt. So in those patients in specific, we must tell them that uh, we must go like uh, an average of eight syringes per side minimum, or 10 syringes per side. That, uh, and uh, concerning the safety, uh, I had a huge experience of butt fillers over the past two years. I think I'm gonna present soon, okay. uh, like about 100 cases. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Are you ready, uh, Massimiliano, or not yet? No, not yet. Okay, just question, waiting for- Dr. Matt, yeah. Dr. Matt. Yeah. No, it's, okay. I have a uh, small question. Uh, in fact, two questions. Uh, what would be the minimum quantity to see an effect Where of the products? Uh, whether it is the uh, Contour or Contour Plus, no. uh, the old one, I would say, uh, and the new uh, product the, with, with bigger particles from a gen Genifil. And the second question is, in how long time we will see the effect? Is it an immediate effect? I mean, immediately after the, the, the procedure, or uh, should we wait for some time to see the effect of the products? I'm going to answer uh, by uh, the second question. You have an immediate effect, like every filler, but it's true that I'm, you, I, I, I used to tell to my patient, wait for two weeks for the tissue integration of the, the product. You will have some swelling, uh, so no intense activity for two weeks, and then at two weeks, uh, tissue is, uh, uh, the, the filler is integrated, swelling is gone, and they should have more or less the, the result at two weeks. What do you think? 
treatment on this issue, I'll always, I always tell my patients, uh, the final result is usually after two weeks, as you said, and I noticed like a 30% increase in the volume compared to directly post the procedure. This yes, and point. another thing, I, uh, an important point I want to tell it about concerning the people always ask, can we work out after the procedure? As you, as you said before, doctor, that usually after one week they can go back to the gym, but people always think that doing sports, they may lose the filler quickly, it will get dissolved. I always advise my patients to go to the gym after one month or even two weeks because I noticed that in many of my patients who had if the volume compared to what I did and after two months of training, an increase up to 30% in the volume. I always encourage them to do uh, squats, but not high, high like, uh, like large amount of weights, but I noticed that gym in specific and squats had an important role and the final, uh, final look or the final results of the fillers. So in this case, negative or positive? It's very positive, and I always positive. advise them to do... It's not going to resolve no, more. No, no, no. I advise them, and in the contrary, they will have huge, huge butts, bigger butts compared bigger to what butt. we have, yeah. Okay. Because of a muscle hypertrophy. Okay, thank you. Uh, regarding the volume, I think this is a key point. You know, sometimes you receive a request from patient, what is the price for 20, for 40? I had a last, uh, last week. What is the price, doctor, for 100 syringe? I told her, it's 30K euro. So uh, you, you better go to a surgery. It's going to be much cheaper. So, but I think we, we should uh, not give this information before assessment because we are not selling, you know, vegetables or, uh, or fruits. We are selling a, a product, uh, service, sorry, and we need to see the patient. Assessment is key. So I think we should not go in this, you know, uh, what is the price per 20? Uh, we need first to see the, consu the, the patient in consultation. In my practice, uh, I have... Um, like you, 10 per side, but we have to make a clear difference between the hips and the butt. And to be honest, I'm always asking the patient, what do you want exactly? We cannot make the, the full butt. You have three area, the hips, the butt, and in between the lateral butt, the transition zone. So if you want an improvement on the front or the back, hips, three quarter, lateral butt, projection, medial butt. And they have to choose because uh, if they want everything, uh, the, the number of syringe is going to increase. So I think, yeah, 20, maybe 30, it means 10, 15 per side. This is a good start, but sometimes they want more and a uh, second session. Okay, so uh, Massimiliano, ready? still not ready? Yeah, ready. Ah, bravo. Can you see me? Not yet, but we are going to see you. Ah, but this is the, the next patient? Yes. Ah, but you don't want to, to, to show us the... the no, for ah. it, I will show you in, in a minute, but ah, we wanted bravo. to finish with this ah, okay. patient and then we'll jump. Because um, Piero just ended the lecture about eyelids, so you, we wanted to finish the, the, this chapter. So just, just one, one question, because we were supposed to have uh, Fabio first, but would you... Huh? Shall we uh, change this for you? What, what they told me. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, you are going to perform a, a live demo about um, periorbital area, also with a, with a feel? You're yeah, 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 of okay. course. Okay. Of course, with higher corp, fine, and feel, of course. Okay. And Piero already told you everything about the product and about the anatomy and how to, to inject it. We have this nice lady. Uh, you see that is not a major correction, but we will do. Uh, we will proceed with um, two entry. I will proceed with two entry points. One entry point here to go in this direction, another one here to visit, go in this direction, going under the muscle. Uh, small quantity, she doesn't need m much. She's already very nice. So you, you see here the nasal jugal full, um, but can be a little bit appreciated, but not too much. Uh, she, she's a minor correction, but we will enjoy it. So, let's start. Any question in the meantime for uh, Piero? Lecture? When did you launch the product, uh, Dr. Riyad, exactly? Uh, Hayakorb uh, Feel. We yeah. are launching it during this Congress, actually. Uh, today? Yeah, today we launched the we Congress looking. at the, the Hayakorb Feel. Also, regarding the Contour Plus, uh, Genifil Contour Plus, it will be launched during MCAS Paris, uh, end of January 2022, yeah. Okay, so the, basically only you uh, and uh, some uh, doctor from the board use uh, 
high core fields for so yes, far? Yes, yeah. we did also a PMCF before. We did a clinical study, okay. pre-market uh, clinical study on the product. We used it in uh, in many with many surgeons that we know <laughs> and many dermatologists as well. Um, the study has been um, done already, and we we will publish it soon. Okay. Waiting for Merci Miano. Ready. ready. Are you ready? Go. Yeah. Ah, bravo. Can you Let's go. see? Uh, yeah, I same story. It's a bit tangential. Yeah. Can you uh, can bend can a little bit the back the of the seat? The yeah. A bit more? OK. Come down. OK, like this is a little better. Yes, much better. Uh, down. So uh, as I said before, I hate the pain. Uh, so little drop of um, anesthetic with a 30 gauge needle in the entry points. And we will fix the problem of the pain of the entry point. Even if when you pin, when you use a 27 gauge needle to uh, enter with a cannula is just a little, little need, nothing. But she told me that she feels pain and she doesn't like to feel pain. So we have been extra gentle. <laughs> so go on this side. OK. So I enter with a needle, 27, to make the uh, entry point. And this is my cannula, 27 gauge needle. Uh, you can see how fluid is the product going out, going in. I'm already under the muscle, the soof. I go, I feel, and I inject. Which depths are you exactly, Massimiliano? I'm under the muscle. OK. One. Second entry point. Put me a little bit more of light. Yeah. Under the muscle, I feel it. I'm under, I go. That's it. Go down with the face. Can you see the difference? One side to the other. Yeah. Easy. This case is very, very easy. <laughs> for lucky you. for her and lucky for us. I'm <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Under, I feel, and retrograde injection. Not in all cases the same technique. Um, according to the nasojugal fold and the quantity of fat uh, of this area, the paranasal area, and uh, the, the technique may change dramatically. If double one layer, double layer, uh, deeper. We don't have much light in the room. Don't worry. <laughs> I will see anyway. <laughs> we will find our way anyway. <laughs> Okay. Under the muscle. <coughs> A little bit more. 
and that's it. A little massage. No, but you are very here. Uh, lot of strength. Yeah, I know. I need it. No. Open your eyes. Watch back. Okay. There is a little touch up I want to do there. The advantage of this product is very fluid. So the risk of bumps and humps is rare. So now I will take some pictures and I will show you the pictures of the, um, of the post-treatment. Okay. Thank you, uh, Massimiliano. Thank you to you. We are running a little bit of uh, out of time, yeah, so I'm going to ask immediately Dr. Fabio Fantozzi, very famous plastic surgeon from Roma, to come on stage and he will uh, present us uh, his uh, whole, f uh, whole face approach with HA filler. Please, Fabio. Okay. Thank you, mate. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, would you like to thank uh, all the organizers of this uh, uh, workshop? bioscience team for the great job for tonight. Um, my name is Dr. Fabio Fantozzi and I took uh, my residency in plastic surgery with the professor Ivo Pitanghi and now I work in Rome, Italy. Uh, this, uh, this painting uh, is a um, painting of uh, Leonardo da Vinci 500 years ago. Was, uh, that uh, uh, was the concept of the beauty uh, 500 years ago for Leonardo. And uh, if, if uh, the concept of the beauty change uh, over the century, but the beauty change in our stage of the life, and uh, the type of beauty change according to our race. Uh, my professor uh, Ivo Pitanghi always uh, said, uh, I, I am not able to describe beauty, but when I see it, uh, I recognize it. In reality, the beauty has, uh, is uh, all in uh, anthropometry, and uh, the beauty has a perfect uh, proportion. In my profession of plastic surgery, I use uh, anthropometric scale, and uh, I like uh, to use uh, the anthropometric scale of uh, Carlo Rocher, that we can analyze the geometry of the beauty. In this painting of uh, Domenico, Il detto il ghirlandaio, that's a portrait of Giovanna degli Albizzi 500 years ago, that we can see the idea of the beauty 500 years ago. But in reality, the beauty is a geometric proportion. And uh, in this scale, we can see that there is uh, the rules of one third. And so the length of the front is the same of the length of the nose. And the, and, and, uh, and the same is equal from the basis of, uh, of the nose to the chin. And so when we have these three sections of the face equal, we have a harmony of the anthropometry of the face. In, in anthropometry, it's important the angle. Remember that the angle between uh, in, uh, the front uh, and the nose in the perfect uh, projection is uh, between uh, 115 and 130 degrees. And uh, the angle between uh, the uh, prolip and the basis of the news is around uh, 90 and 110 degrees. And uh, when uh, we, um, when another, another angle important that the two uh, imaginary line between the dorsum and the chin that produce an angle in perfect harmony of 120, 130, and 132 degrees. And now we study every, each part of the face that is lip, nose, ear, and eyes, the perfect anthropometry. And so that there is the law of the one third, and so we analyze the last third between the basis of uh, the, the nose and the chin. And so we see the proportion, and in the middle of the lips uh, is uh, from the distance to, to the basis of the, the nose is one third, and two thirds to arrive to the chin. 
if we see, uh, we make a close up to, to the leap, we see that uh, in this uh, type of anthropometry, the uh, superior leap has uh, a height of 10 millimeters and uh, the, the height of the lower leap is, uh, is more, is 16 millimeters. And so when you performing uh, hyaluronic acid for, for the leap, it's important to remember that to increase more the volume in the inferior leap and you have more natural effect and you respect the anthropometry of the face. In the male, the leap is, uh, is less, like uh, volume, and the upper lip height is eight millimeter around, a lower lip height is uh, 14 millimeter. And uh, in the eyes, we remember that the large, always the, the low of the one third, the large of the eyes is the same distance between the eyes. And uh, the lateral commissure that the eyes is higher if you compare with the medial commissure. If we see this close up, we can understand that in the middle commissure, if you compare the lateral commissure, it's important that it's higher. In this case, we produce an angle of five degrees and is like three millimeter my higher if you compare with the medial commissure. And so if we see the patient, for example, the first patient has a fallen high and so the lateral commission is lower and so the eye is not pure beautiful. The second case is the same line media commission with the lateral commission. But when the lateral commission is higher, is a produced angle of nine degrees, we have a almond high. When is more higher, it arrive to 11 degrees, we produce a slight high. And so how you, we can use when inject a, a filler or something? We remember that it is important to put a moon of hyaluronic acid in the lateral part of the lateral commissure of the eyes to produce, for example, in this case, we make a combination about plastic surgeons or blepharoplasty with injection to fill under the eyes to produce this angle of five degrees in, and so the lateral commissure is higher. In the men, the same, but in not so high, and so the perfect uh, anthropometry is uh, say around a seven degrees angle. Uh, we pass to the news. In the news, we remember that the length of the news is the same of the length of the front in between the, the basis of the nose and the chin. And it is important uh, that uh, uh, the angle, all the angle of the news are really important for the anthropometry. In the main, the angle between the, the pre-leap and, 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 and the news is around to arrive 95 degrees. In the woman, is a little bit larger to arrive 110 degrees. And the other angle is the angle between the, the dorsum of the nose and the front. Is in the man, the, the ideal, ideal is 115 degrees. And in the woman, is a little bit more bigger, is to arrive at 130 degrees. It's important the relationship with, his, with the dorsum, with the tip. In the man, is the same line, is a straight. In the woman, uh, is the nasal tip is a little bit, uh, only one millimeter, if, if you uh, make a comparison with the dorsum. And uh, when we see in the front, it's important the man that the relationship with the dorsum and, and the nasal tip is uh, the, in the same line, is straight. In the woman, it's important that produce this curve. Why? Because when we do, uh, when perform uh, in uh, feeling of the nose, we produce this disaster. This disaster that we didn't respect the anthropometry of the nose. And so here we have uh, no more angle between the dorsum and the front. We have no more curve. And so we're necessary a surgery to remove all uh, the hyaluronic acid to 
come back in the restore the normal uh, harmony of, of the news. And the news, we remember that uh, the eyes of the nasal tip, uh, that in this scale, uh, very small uh, is the height when uh, we stay in 2.3 centimeter and to arrive uh, in 3. 0.5 centimeter. That is important because when you make a feeling of the nose, it's important not exaggerating you know, the nasal tip and to produce to, to match the higher of the nasal tip. Remember that the, this relationship between the nasal tip and the basis of the nose that the one third and two third only when you make you know the reshaping of the nose. Or, uh, to conclude the here, Remember that the length of the nose is very similar in the perfect anthropometry of the length of the hair. And the inclination okay, of the dorsum is the same of the hair. That is the perfect harmony when we have in the face. But in this case, in this young lady, we see that we have a different proportion between the nose and the hair. The hair is, is bigger. And so the nose is smaller. And so that is important because if you like to do reshaping this phase only to know, you know where is the best place to put hyaluronic acid. And so the hand, why, uh, when you make reshaping of the phase, it is important to know very well the anthropometry of the phase. With the hyaluronic acid, we can reshaping the dorsum of the, the nose, we can reshaping the cheekbones, we can reshaping the nasal tip, the fold, the nasal fold, we can, we can uh, uh, treat the mid face, the lip, the chin, and the hypotrophy of the lobus of the hair. And so I think that in my profession, always I use uh, the anthropometry skill that help to, be, to have the best results. And it's very easy, in the reality, improve natural results. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Fabio. Uh, as we are running a little bit out of time, we are going to ask immediately uh, the next speaker, uh, Dr. Athanasios Christopoulos, plastic surgeon from Athens, uh, Greece, to come on stage and he will present his experience with Genefil, the X benefits of combining HA with dextranomer. Please, doctor. Hello. First of all, I want to thank all of you for being here and thanking and thank uh, Bioscience for uh, trusting me to present this topic to you. Let's, uh, uh, we're going, I'm going to talk today about Genefield DX and the benefits of combining hyaluronic acid with uh, the dextranomer. So let's see first what is a dextranomer. Let's see what is the dextran. Dextran is uh, a polysaccharide practically derived from the condensation of the glucose. So dextranomer, it's uh, microspheres composed of cross-linked uh, dextran molecules with positive uh, surface charge, biodegradable and hydrophilic, as I told you. So what is the, the Genefield DX? Uh, is uh, a suspension of, uh, a gel suspension for treatment uh, of the skin defects. Why positively charged? Because it uh, does stimulation of the collagenesis type 1, as we know. So it, is, uh, it has a size of particle between 40 to 125, while we know that the maximum particle size reported in the literature has been phagocytized uh, is uh, 70, 65 to 70. So it is uh, beyond the, to the limits and beyond the limits of the possibility of being phagocytized. And uh, the charged surface, as we told, uh, is uh, positively charged. Which areas we treat uh, with uh, this product? We treat deep wrinkles. We can do cheek, zygoma augmentation, and jawline and chin. Let's see a few key points about uh, the product. First of all, is uh, only for advanced injectors because hyaluronidase does not degrade the dextranomer but only the hyaluronic acid. And uh, secondly, sorry, 
sorry. So, and uh, it should be injected very deeply because it creates a collagen network in order to support the skin. The advantage is that we avoid, avoid the abnormalities to the, sur to the surface because of the deep injection, and the disadvantage is that uh, it is not for thin wrinkles. Let's see a few more advantages. The main advantage is uh, the two-in-one effect. It does augmentation because uh, of the replacement of the hyaluronic acid and uh, neocollagenesis uh, because uh, with type 1 collagen. It regenerates the dermal matrix and uh, that gives increased volumization and uh, duration. So it gives an immediate re augmentation because of the hyaluronic acid and uh, excellent long-term results uh, because of the positively charged microbeards and uh, the regeneration that they give. So the combination of hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid and dextranomer gives uh, a long-lasting effect. Why it gives a long-lasting effect? For three reasons. One is the stability against enzymes because of the high viscosity. The second uh, is because of the large particle of the dextranomer. And the third reason is because of the resistance to macrophage phagocytosis because of the positively charged uh, surface. From uh, the other part, we know that it has been used for the regeneration in the past in wound healing. Another, uh, another advantage is uh, that uh, because uh, it is white and non-transparent, it does not create the Tyndall effect. We see here the Tyndall effect is the transparency of the hyaluronic acid uh, that we see here in the nose and uh, different other areas of the face as we see here. Let's see a few cases because uh, with uh, the product. First of all, I have to see, say that I am a plastic surgeon, so I like to operate. I like, uh, from the other side, I like to do injections, and I like to combine injections with uh, surgery as well. So few of the cases will be purely done, that you will see the cases, will be, uh, are purely done with uh, the injectable, and few others are combination of surgery. Here we see combination of uh, a buccal fat pad remover uh, surgically and uh, injection to the chin for reshaping of the face and we see here the shape of the face. Here is only injection to the chin with the Genophil Dix for chin augmentation. Here, we see to the cheeks we have fat atrophy, which uh, has been corrected uh, with uh, the injection, with the injectable, all these thin wrinkles, thin wrinkles, et cetera. Here is another case where I did uh, a buccal fat pad removal, which is a surgical procedure, and uh, then after a while I did uh, chin augmentation and the cheek augmentation for reshaping of the face. We see here the new shape of this face. This is uh, another procedure with just a chin augmentation with uh, the injectable and the liposuction to the fat uh, under the chin. This is uh, just uh, a Genophil Dix injection to the zygomas and uh, to the chin for reshaping of the face. Uh, this lady came to me for uh, primary, uh, for secondary rhinoplasty after a procedure she had in the past, uh, asking uh, to do the rhinoplasty, but uh, I advised her to do the chin as well because of the better symmetry of the face that it can give. And you see here the result. Here is just uh, chin augmentation with uh, the filler. And uh, here is again chin augmentation. We see how much uh, it changes the, the, the shape, just this. This is a serial injection, uh, a, a serial injection in more stages of uh, the chin here because I like to do staged uh, 
procedures, staged uh, augmentation, and here the same to the chin and uh, the uh, nose as well, uh, just with the injectable. And uh, this is my cousin here. She had an uh, accident, and uh, I had. Uh, she is a part of the family, so I had to correct her nose. And uh, this gentleman here had uh, been operated for the nose to eyes. I don't know he, how he ended after this with his nose. And uh, uh, he did not want to be operated anymore, so I did it with uh, the uh, filler. We see here nasolabial folds. Sorry for the before, because she's slightly smiling, but I did not have any other picture of her before. So, uh, but you can see the difference here. And uh, here is another young lady where I did uh, buccal fat pad removal and then after a while uh, cheek augmentation, chin augmentation and uh, uh, the line of the mandible, mandible as well. You see the shaping, reshaping of the face. Here is uh, her mother. She came uh, a few months later. I did... Uh, um, SMAS, uh, extended SMAS facelift, uh, and uh, after a while we did uh, the augmentation with the injectable of the, of the chin. And we see here the new shape of, of the face. This is another lady which uh, has been um, uh, having initially an operation where I did uh, a rhinoplasty, buccal fat pad removal, and uh, after, I did a chin augmentation with the injectable and um, the line of the mandible, the angle of the mandible, augmentation to the angle of the mandible as well. And we see here the new uh, shape of this face. She's very happy. This is uh, another lady where I did um, a facelift uh, with uh, chin augmentation with uh, silicone implant. This implant has been infected after a while, so I had to remove it. She did not want to replace it, uh, and uh, we did the augmentation with uh, the filler. We see the new shape of, the, of her face here. And uh, here is a, another lady, a very problematic case. Um, she had uh, lots of problems. Uh, uh, psychological problems, so I did um, rhinoplasty, chin augmentation with uh, implant, uh, liposuction to the neck, uh, and uh, defining of uh, the mandible, and uh, uh, on only the chin implant was not enough. Uh, very big implants do not uh, give a, a good result, uh, so in these cases I prefer to combine them with uh, the filler, the Genefil DX. Um, and uh, we have this, uh, so she, after this uh, she had, uh, and buccal fat rem removal, sorry, I forgot to tell it. And uh, so af she, after this she had uh, a normal life before, before she did not have a normal life. So concluding, what do we want uh, from a filler? We want uh, safety and uh, duration. And uh, as you see, uh, at the end of this box uh, says, uh, for longer lasting pleasure. This is what, what we want. So there are two solutions for long lasting pleasure. One is, the, one is this, and the other is uh, the Genefield Diggs. Thank you. If it is true, Dr. Christopoulos. So now it's 6.10, we still have 20 minutes in this symposium, and uh, we, uh, we still have many things to do. Uh, and I uh, encourage you to stay up to the end. We will have a little surprise, so stay with us. And now we are back with uh, Massimiliano. He's going to show us the results first. Are you with us, Massimiliano? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, great. We don't uh, see you. Yeah, you, you cannot see. I'm in behind Dr. Fantozzi. So this is the result. Can you see the results? Yes. So this is the immediate result of my injection. You, you see the improvement of the trochanteric area uh, on both sides. What was more important on the, on the right one. Um, from the lateral point of view, 
uh, we increase the projection of the upper pole here. So I think that uh, for a treatment like that is a very good result. Uh, the patient with hyaluronic uh, acid for nasogenic uh, folds, here she is. And I think this, this it's a good correction. She didn't need uh, nothing very important. One ML, fair enough to achieve a very, very good result. Uh, see you in one minute. Okay, thank you. Grazie mille, uh, Massimiliano, and congratulations for amazing result. Uh, now we are going to ask uh, Dr. Fabio Fantosi um, to perform a live demo on hands. You remember that uh, we, uh, we mentioned the difference between MLF1 and MLF2 for the higher corp. MLF2 has bigger particle and it's more for butt and hips, but MLF1, smaller particle, is for other body areas. One of them is the dorsum of the hands. So we should have now Fabio uh, okay. ready for okay. this live demo. Yes, I am ready. Bravo. Uh, I have this uh, lovely patient that is uh, 67 uh, years old. And uh, yes, she wants to improve uh, the beauty of the hands. And so we start, uh, we make a filtration uh, with the hyaluronic acid. And uh, I like it to only to sign the point where I start with the injection here. And uh, uh, with the hyaluronic acid, we can treat this depression between the tendons and the vessels that um, the venous system of the ends. And so uh, the, the area where we make in, uh, hyaluronic acid is here in the middle. And uh, I enter from, from one point, a lateral point, and I make injection that arrive to the finger, and when uh, I go back, I release uh, the hyaluronic acid. That is a very easy procedure. Now we start um, to put um, some uh, disinfection, and so I like to use betadine, and so, and uh, always important uh, to clean very well under the treatment, uh, because the hands are very, vascular system is very, very good, and so the bacteria can make uh, some problem uh, for the uh, patient in the post op. But this treatment uh, is very is very easy, and so we start uh, with the infiltration. The infiltration is uh, lidocaine that make uh, first wall in the first point and the lateral part of the hands and uh, that uh, is the point uh, where we'll start. And uh, only to be sure that uh, don't feel uh, anything, uh, we put a little bit uh, of uh, in, uh, infiltration uh, here, only to be sure that the patient uh, doesn't feel uh, anything uh, during uh, the procedure. And uh, it's very easy, it's a little bit, uh, not so much, So Fabio, only one entry point to, for the four commissure or? I, but uh, is uh, two points, uh, is a little bit, because in the reality, here, sometimes I don't use anesthesia. It's only to be sure that the patient, you know, don't feel anything. Sometimes I don't use. It's only two, three points here, not so much. And now we can start uh, with the procedure and uh, the rose needle we put here, and uh, we start uh, with the cannula, 18 joule, and... Uh, Can you ask the cameraman to zoom out a little bit to see the okay. syringe? Uh, and so now we, store, we stay inside, we arrive uh, so, Okay, and uh, we take the syringe. 18 gauge? 18, 18. Okay, we can start. Okay, okay, we arrive to the finger and we release. We go to the finger.
Let we release. We go to the finger. Let we to release. You feel something? No. The patient doesn't feel uh, anything. It's very calm. It's very little bit of anesthesia. Okay. And uh, it's very easy procedure. Normally, around uh, this hand is not so very big a hand. And so I think uh, maybe 80 cc is, is, is good. So Fabio, I was asking you if you would consider a second entry point more radial to, fir no, to the because, first and uh, second uh, I think sure. that in the reality, with the one point, uh, you yeah. enter. In okay. the reality, you don't need that. Now, now we stay around uh, six. We can stop a little bit, make a massage. You take a gorse, close, close. It's important to close very well and make a massage for a uniform, to put a uniform, the hyaluronic acid on the hands. In this moment, you can see where you need. When you close the eye, the, the hands are very strong, and so it's here, here, and here. We can mark the position. It's here, it's here, and it's here, that need more. And so, we start again, and we put again. Okay, you go down. In this point at the mark. Here, you go there. What? And there. Emiliano is going to speak now. Sorry? Okay. Now, we make a control. Close the hands. We clean. Practice, we finish. And now you close. So how many CC, Fabio? Full now is eight, but we need only to check if we need a little bit more, maybe here and here a little bit. But if you compare with the other hands, you can see that we are we have a little part of here that need more, and we can go there. Yeah. Okay. Fabio, yes. you, you didn't inject so much the first web. Personally, I like to inject the first web okay. to reproduce this nice muscular contour, you know, of the first uh, dorsal enterosis muscle. You, what do you think? Because you are also having a very lateral, I mean, cubital entry point. Why you didn't put it in the middle of the, the wrist, Chris? I think that uh, one, I, my, my approach is I like very much to use only one approach that uh, because remember that always the hyaluronic acid is in the hands and more if you enter in more points uh, only to preserve the infection, uh, you know, any, any problem. But I think uh, if you look uh, here with only one point of entrance, we resolve. Need a little bit here only to complete the treatment. Sorry. And uh, we stay, in this end, it's not so big end. And so one around the eight uh, is enough. But uh, when you have very big hands, this position that close 
the hands and make this massage is very important to be uniform. You know, the, all, all the hyaluronic acid. Okay. Okay, Fabio. Okay. I think it's clear. Okay. Congratulazione, grazie mille, and we are going to move forward to the last lecture of uh, Massimiliano Brambilla. After butt, hips, and hands, uh, Massimiliano is going to present us his experience on uh, the calves, I think, and also uh, depression uh, of any types. So I think it should be here. <laughs> Grazie Fabio, yeah, per favore. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed the, the, the procedure. I think that the result was a good result for what we did. Um, not only Botox, why not only Botox? Because volumes uh, sometimes may be encouraged by ironic acid in another part of uh, of the body. So bioscience produces a wide range of hyaluronic acid uh, suitable for body contouring and each one has specific rheology. And rheology is so crucial and fundamental to understand exactly which kind of product you have to choose. So um, we know that there are products that are non-cross links and then other that are cross links. We know that there are monophasic and biphasics and between the those products, there are huge, there may be huge differences. And then, according to the HA concentration and the HA particle size, we have products that are very, very different one to the other. So, HA concentration, HA molecular weight, and the cross-linking, they go under the name, those properties go under the name, go under the name of rheology. And rheology, the three parameters of rheology are viscosity, elasticity, and cohesivity. So when you change one of those parameters, uh, concentration, molecular weight, or cross-linking, you have diff a product that is completely different one from the other. So elasticity, the capability to co recover uh, original shape after deformation, so like an elastic. Viscosity, the inability to recover original shape. And then cohesivity, so it's sticking together. So when we want to uh, inject, for example, quite a, a good volume in a place where there is a pressure, you need cohesivity um, as a nice parameter. So this is cohesivity. Um, so cohesivity, plasticity, viscoelasticity for the optimal tissue support. So you have to know exactly which kind of uh, which kind of product to use. Then um, bioscience has a particular uh, strategy to give more stability and less reabsor reabsorption that is this tixotropic technology. But for those who, who view who's interested in rheology, I, uh, uh, please read about it because it's very interesting. And then those are the products of bioscience that you know, but for body contouring, we have a genophil and hyacorp with a medium high viscosity, with a medium high elasticity, according to the product that you're using. Uh, some products are harder, some products are softer, and you have to choose your product. And if we compare, for example, the products uh, and here we compare uh, Hyacorp, MLF1, MLF2. We, we see, for example, that they, they change in the particle size. They change in particle size. They go from 80 to 500, so huge difference. And of cross-linked HA, I don't know why it changed this way, is from 16 to 20. So there is very big difference. And if we compare higher core, face, lips, contouring, you, you see here the cross-linking stabilization is dramatically different from the one for the face and the one from MLF2. It, from 3.6 of a stabilization rate to 18.4, completely different products. Um, and if we compare the dimension of the, the particles as well and the cross-linking as well, look at the MLF1 and Genefil contour, they're not so far away one from the other, but with uh, MLF2, is, the particles are, they go by, uh, up to 500 and the cross-linking is different because definitely MLF2 is more cross-linked 
than MLF1 and definitely much, much more than genetic field contour. Uh, so the, those parameters are fundamental, crucial to, depend, to define the right product that has to be uh, chosen according to the final result, the anatomical area, the tissue depth, and, and the injection technique. Uh, tissue quality is very important. If we inject in prodermal, subdermal, or subfacial, is completely different. And we have to, uh, to, to decide the, the kind of product according to the skin quality. As you have seen in the patient I, I treated today, uh, so if we have a, we, we want to encourage a body volume, if we want to give projection, so body volumes, uh, what we, we have to do is, uh, how can I use it? Yeah, um, the, um, the, the injection has to be intra technique, uh, no spread, maximal vertical projection because we, we want to, to pop up. So high viscosity, high elasticity, high cosivity product. Why, if we have a body skin relaxation, then it's subdermal technique and dermal interinjection. So we want a product that spread because we, we want an effect of spreading uh, um, among the tissues. Uh, so we want a good projection, but m mainly we want to reduce uh, the, um, the relaxation. So mid viscosity, uh, mid elasticity and high cohesivity. So th this is the line of products we have for body contouring from uh, MLF2, that is the top on viscosity and elasticity. Sorry. Uh, is uh, on, on the top for viscosity and elasticity. Then we have genefia and genefia contour with very characteristic, so less viscosity and less elasticity. Uh, actual possibilities for bios for those uh, products, volume enhancing, shape remodeling, lax laxity treatment, buttocks, arms, calves, hands, not breast. Uh, genitals, question mark, but it is out of label, so don't, don't do it now, even if there is discussion about the use uh, of using it or not. Um, let's go by some cases. For example, this, um, in this case, there was a scar. The, the, the goal was to improve scar quality. The tissue is relaxed, stretch skin quality, so is genital contour the best product to use, and the immediate after. And again, another uh, little um, depression. We want to improve the scar, relax, stretch skin, so genetic contour. Where I inject, I inject under the dermis and it works perfectly. Um, in cases like a Poland, it is more tricky and the, the skin is so thin. And then we have the thorax right there. So we have to use a product with low viscosity and low density, otherwise it would be seen. And there is no fat, of course, because fat graft is the first choice in this case. Uh, so genetic contour and this result. Uh, laxity, we want to reduce um, relaxation, uh, poor quality of the skin, genetic contour be because of a characteristic, not a more dense one. So subdermal, um, subdermal uh, fan technique, and but one, yeah, subdermal um, fan technique to improve the laxity. But when we want to improve uh, really the volume, we have to go to a uh, more dense product, high viscosity, high elasticity. Example for the calves, we were select, selecting exactly where to inject. We cannot inject all the length. We have to select where to inject and where to improve our, uh, our correction. So perspective of macromolecular IHA, I think it has a very bright future in body contouring when, when there, uh, there are proper indications and there is a proper patient selection with a good practice that has to be respected. So proper knowledge of HA rheology, proper knowledge of indications, proper knowledge of techniques. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Massimiliano. So it's 6.30 sharp. Let's take just a few minutes to make the conclusion and maybe for one or two questions. Any question in the, in the audience? Can you take a microphone, please? Thank you. Thank you. 
Dr. Brambilla, you put the question mark on the genital areas uh, for body contouring. Uh, and you said it's an off-label, so what's your opinion about it? Uh, my opinion is that we, if we discuss from the embryological point of view, <laughs> external genitalia are ectoderm, not endoderm. Uh, so are the same origin of abdomen and of the skin and everything that is outside. So if we make a fine discussion, embryological discussion, what do you think, Matt? If we make a, a discussion, a fine discussion about embryology, I would say that we can uh, do it. Then in, in a trial in a tribunal, we have to discuss about that. <laughs> so it would not be so, so easy. And, and from the practical, practical point of view, I, I, I think that um, it is definitely more a matter of knowing when, where to inject and how much to inject and the selection of the right product. There is the right product. It means just to be tested in the right place and, and, and that's it. Any other question? Yes. Microphone, just one minute. Um, question to Dr. Brown, Brown Beeler, really. Um, hi, I'm from the United Kingdom. Hey. Um, over in the United Kingdom, we have quite a few requests. Um, for one, the genital, which you've just answered for us. The next one is the breast. Now, in my own practice, I'm a general practitioner, I'm a GP, so I see a lot of, um, obviously, women that turn up with breast lumps, breast cancer, etc. So when, I, when, when my colleagues ask me, my, well, my, my answer is always uh, no. Now, I give you my, my, my opinion from my point of view. I'm in charge of a reconstructive surgery of yes, a breast right. unit of my hospital, so I deal with cancer since 20 years. So I'm hypersensitive. On the other side, I was one of the ones with Per Hayden that um, did all the preliminary studies, all the studies on macro length of the breast. So I can answer you very precisely. I'm not the same product, but the, the main problem on your, of uronic acid inside the breast are, first of all, uh, the detection of breast, of breast cancer after the treatment, because you, you, you give bad life to radiologists. No way. So you need radiologists that are prepared to follow different images and different imaging. Then not all patients could, even if theoretically, are suitable for that treatment. Imagine, for example, patients with a multicystic breast they are not at all uh, suitable. And then, more than that, I think that there are still some question marks about the inflammatory reactions of uronic acid into such a sensitive part of a body, of a female body. Um, there are so many parameters, but I really think that uronic acid one day will be an alternative to breast implants, because, because even breast implants, they are not perfect. I mean, if you look at the rate, the complication rate, and the rupture rate of implants is not perfect. But from the other side, I think that uh, it, mm, studies are needed, I mean, really serious studies from cancer institutes in order to ensure that the inflammation that uronic acid may give uh, would not affect the, um, would not improve a potential cancer, um, a, a potential cancer. And an uh, important question is about uh, if you want to dissolve the product, for some reason. What is your protocol? Are you going to use the, the easy. same? It's extra easy. I, I do everything under uh, echography. Uh, I feel comfortable to use myself. I have two radiologists in, um, in, my, in my office and I have all the radiologists in hospital. So we, we like to be precise. We, we define exactly where we are. We see the lump and you, you, uh, the small anesthesia, you, you enter with a needle and if you can uh, aspirate directly the uronic acid you aspirate. If you feel that the uronic acid is hard to aspirate, some uronic days, you wait one minute and then you aspirate. I never found, really never found a complication, the aspiration of, of, of lumps, of nodules. And sometimes I see fantasies of big incisions to remove some lumps that can be easily, very easily, treated with some uronic acid. 
in some year only days. In terms of volume uh, units, uh, it's much more than phase filler, of course. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, about the uh, high LAs for, you know... Uh, about you the only days? Yes, if you want to dissolve, for example, uh, I don't know, breast or butts for some reason. Uh, you it, use a big amount? Uh, no, 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 no. No? Definitely, it's dissolving you, you, quite... Definitely, easy. you don't need... Definitely, you, you don't need it. I, I would say that if you have an, uh, an average amount of 10 cc's, is 20... Uh, is 2 cc's. So okay. it's one on five, probably. Okay, thank you. Any other question? No? Okay, great. So it's, uh, we have overpassed a little bit our time. So I think this is uh, now the time to conclude this uh, bioscience symposium. It was a big pleasure to share, to share this uh, two hours with you. Uh, big applause to our six speakers, uh, Massimiliano, Duco, Anastasios, Dr. Eyad, and also Fabio. I don't know if Fabio is, uh, is able to join us for the final comments. Is there any, uh, by the way, can we connect with Fabio just to say hi and just in case we see the, the last uh, result of uh, the hands? No? No? Okay, not possible. So, and of course, Piero, that was the first. Uh, <laughs> no, we were just saying uh, some uh, comments, last comment about the, about the speaker. So uh, thank you very much, Piero, because you are uh, one of the first to be on the, on the bioscience board. I hope you guys, you enjoyed this, uh, this symposium 360, not only body, also face. And I want to mention something I, I forgot to, to say. Bioscience was the, first, the very first company in the world to have a CE mark both for face and body filler. There are not a single one, there are uh, a few other ones, but at least they were the first, the pioneer, and definitely the leader since 20 years. So with that, I want to thank everybody uh, and also the bioscience team. Any uh, more questions, you are welcome at the booth. And with that, have a very good evening, everyone. And we are ready for the final little surprise.